Welcome back everybody to my 37th update video. Now these videos where I go back to 10 past product reviews in chronological order. I take a look back at how the original review went and also let you know if anything changed since my original review was posted. Because I do tend to use these products after my review is posted if I find them useful at all. If I didn't continue to use them, I'll also let you know why. The products in this particular update cover from July to August of 2021, so it's been over a year. So without further delay, let's get right to update number 37. Number 361 was the Ember Mug. This is a heated coffee mug. It's a bit expensive, but I did find that it worked pretty well. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. So what I'm gonna do is take the coaster off. I'm gonna pour about one cup into each one of these, and let them sit and see what happens. Regular coffee mug, 124. Ember, 125, so one degree off. All right, so the Ember app already knows the temperature of the liquid in the cup, which is kind of impressive actually and the heater's not on see it's, it's actually gone down by degree now let's kick the heater on a little bit and put it up to 135. it hit the target temperature in fact it gave me a notification telling me that my target temperature was hit which is kind of nice that took about six minutes so i got a notification at the 80 minute mark that it was time to recharge my ember so really right on schedule i made a big thing of coffee i put it in the two cups they were 145 degrees when i first got up i got some ball tossing to do first let's do a taste slash warmth test to see how it goes Ember first. Mm. That's the same temperature I poured it at. My favorite coffee mug. Not gonna go well. Mm. Oh, I, I do not like lukewarm coffee. That's not good. Much better. This is nice. This is not so nice. To me, I really like it. I'm gonna keep using it. All right, so after over a year, it looks it looks really nice. It's I have no complaints. It's, it's held up pretty well. I, I try to maintain it as best as I can. Uh, there's no major scuffs or marks. I kind of go through phases of using it. I might use it for a few weeks at a time, then put it away for a few weeks. Um, you might have seen it being compared to a product called a Thermo Joe recently, and I picked this one over that one as well. It's one of those things that it's kind of expensive, but most people who buy it do like it. Number 362 was a set of folding gadgets. A couple of them I still use to this day. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. These, which are the folding Ray-Ban Wayfarer sunglasses. So the claims of this model from the original Wayfarer glasses, but this one folds for the ultimate portability. So this is how the, the bridge folds. And really when it's folded, there isn't much of an obvious sign that it can even fold. The lenses are absolutely spectacular. They're perfect. Here you can see how dark they are, what the tent is. Uh, see if you like that or not. I like it. I think it looks pretty good. I don't know if these are worth 160 bucks, I mean, for, for plastic frames. This is a folding Bluetooth keyboard. The keys feel nice under my fingers, but if you forget to close it, the battery's gonna drain. I've had that happen twice to me already. The other thing I don't like about it is this gap right here in the middle. I missed the K, keyboard. Here's the B to see how it compares to, C didn't hit the, I hit the C, didn't get it. Part of the reason I missed the Y is because look how small this Y is. I'm just struggling to type on this. Pillow pad fold away. What I like about it is you don't have to rotate it to find the right angle. You can just put it at the right angle. That's a good improvement. This phone barely fits. The original pillow pad, I felt like I was a little bit cramped in here. So it seems to me like this is a better option. Look how thin that is. I think this is a this is definitely a logical upgrade from the original pillow pad. This is the my fold away rechargeable fan as seen on TV. Just unfolds like this. And then this comes up like that. And then you've got, this is uh, about 40 inches. Uh, low, you're gonna get about nine, 10 hours of battery life. Medium, you'll get about five or six. And on high, you'll probably get about two. Once it's going, you really don't think about it being anything but just a regular small desk or floor fan. Fold it down, fold that back. But this one does have at least about a 12 foot range, I would say on high, so not too bad really. I can actually put it on the floor and extend it. And I can even leave it plugged in if I had to, so I don't have to worry about charging it. Four in one cutlery set includes detachable fork, spoon, knife, and bottle opener. One thing I do notice that when you when you hold the knife, you kept you definitely have a spoon in your palms. But you know, it's working. Not really holding the jelly too well. Oh, you know what's not bad? The knife's pretty sharp. I've used it for breakfast. I've used it for lunch. I've used it for dinner. I've taken it to restaurants. I've used it everywhere. If I was looking for a cutlery set for hiking, camping, RVing, backpacking, I would probably recommend this because it's actually pretty good. All right, so that group, I still use the My Full Away rechargeable fan. I used it all last summer and all this summer. 
It's just nice because I can put it on my desk or on my floor. It's pretty versatile. The charge lasts for a long time, so I'm pretty happy with this one. I also use the pillow pad fold away quite a bit, although I don't use the, the interior section whatsoever. But I do find that I'm laying in bed at night before I go to sleep. This is kind of nice because I can rest my phone in there and when I'm done, fold it up, put it aside. So those are the two items of that bunch that I still use to this day. Number 363 was a kind of a weird ice cube maker. Now I've done quite a few ice cube trays over the years. This is one of the weirder ones. It did kind of work, but let's flash back to how the original review went. Comparing this to the Icebreaker Pop though, I mean, you can see they're very similar. They both have three rows of six cubes. The instructions for the ice ball maker say to fill up to right there. This one's kind of interesting because you're supposed to fill it not all the way to the top and then squeeze the, the air out. You have to go slow though, it kind of, kind of dribbles in there. Squeeze the excess air out and screw the lid on tightly. The, the original Icebreaker Pop held 10 ounces. This only held about six. You're supposed to kind of do this and then you're supposed to take the lid off, which is very stiff and Hiya! You can kind of see in there a little better. Okay, here, they're, they're round. They are ice balls. I, they're very attractive shaped ice though. This is my full $1 ice cube tray. Look how easy this is to get the ice out. And it makes 14 ounces. I do like this one in some respects. I like this one in other respects. I like this one in a lot more respects. So perhaps not surprisingly, I did not continue to use the ice ball maker. Right now, I still kind of prefer my dollar store ice cube trays. They make more ice, they're easier and they're cheaper. I think the ice ball maker was kind of a cool invention, but I didn't find it very useful for me. Number 364 is a collection of car gadgets, and one of them I'm still using to this day, but let's first take a look back at how the original review went. So all you do is, is just pop it on the record player, and you're good to go. Installation is pretty simple. It just has a, a clip here. The air flows through there to make the record player spin, and you have an arm here that doesn't do anything. It's just for decoration. Whoa. That's on high. So I don't really smell the air freshener when it's turning and the air is blowing it right at me. As an air freshener, it's all right. But as a cool decoration, it's pretty good. It helps keep your car neat. Clips on the sun visor with easy access. Slide it over. It's gonna block my mirror so I won't have my mirror now. Allergies kicking in. I kinda need a tissue. How easy is it? Nah, pretty easy. This is quite handy. I, I actually, actually kind of like it. Someone in the comments were saying that soft tissues would not dispense easily. It's literally right in my face. This is, this is what I'm seeing. The claims are that this is a non-slip mounting pad that can be used to prevent slippage for phones, cameras, keys, and more. You just put it on the dash here. How's that feel? Oh, wow. It's holding it. It's sticking to the phone and not the dash. That's what some people said was happening. I'm kind of impressed by how well it's holding it. Around a corner, let's see, nothing. Claims are that it's an all-in-one trash can with two removable liners. First up, you have this kind of opening where the trash goes into. There are storage pouches on the side. And then here's the tissue dispenser, and actually it's Velcro also. So you cannot put a full-size tissue box in there. It has to be something small. All right, well, it does hold them, but there's nothing holding it on the side. So, I mean, you gotta have this, I guess. I'm not sure I really like it right here. I mean, if you're someone sitting here, what are they gonna do? It's gonna be like right in their, right in their face. Let me see, I actually have some tissues I used yesterday. Let me try it. There it goes, gone, I like it. Giant Starbucks cup, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Quite a few people were complaining about the tissues on there, so I think the tissue feature is probably its weakest link. This is the Varsk 4-in-1 car vacuum tire inflator digital gauge LED light. It feels like a normal car vac. I don't, it doesn't seem much better than any other car vac I've used. Dog hair, man, so much dog hair. Nice, shut on its own. Sweet, it worked. I'm gonna grab the camera and show you. It's on my dash and I use this quite a bit. Anytime I film in my car, I've gotta use this product. And that is the dash pad. I put my camera on here since I put my phone there and it's getting kind of kind of hairy and, and dusty, but it still works. It's, I mean, I, if I put anything on there, it seems to stay in place. Sometimes I put my phone on this bean bag. Now the bean bag slides right off 
if it's not on the dash pad, but on the dash pad, it stays in place. So even though it does pick up hair and dirt, it's been pretty useful for me. Now, as far as the record player goes, I, I had that in my car for about six months. The scent lasted maybe a week. It didn't last very long at all, but it looked so cool, I kept using it. Now, my son does continue to use the Varsk. He mainly uses to keep the air in his tires topped off. Doesn't use it as a vac too often, but he does use it as an air compressor pretty regularly. Number 365 was an emergency light bulb. Let's first flash back to the original review and see how that went. That it works as a regular LED light bulb, but will give three to four hours of light during a power outage. 60 watts when it's plugged into the wall and only 40 when it's in battery mode. It is a nice bright light. It's, it's as bright as a normal light bulb is. The way it works is that it charges an internal battery when it's plugged into a light socket. Because it works with a closed circuit, you can't just unplug it for the wall and expect it to work. It's still going to go off. You can't hit the light switch in the wall. That's also not going to work. But you can use this cap switch, which will actually close the circuit and give you light. There's also this hook they included that has a switch on it. So basically, you can carry it around that point and use this button as a switch, and the light will work there too. When all else fails, you have nothing. You can use your fingers to close the circuit. I've got JC out there by my circuit breaker. Hit it. There it went. As you can see, the emergency bulb flicked back on. The regular lamp is off. You probably can't see me, but this is how dim the light looks after three hours. Very dim. It may not be perfect, but there are definitely situations where people would find something like this useful. All right, nearly a year and a half later, I'm happy to report that that light bulb still works. It's still on my lamp, but let me go show you how it looks. All right, it is in this lamp. Uh, let me take it out of here and show you how it's held up. It's looking pretty good. Now check this out. Uh, it still works. It's been in this lamp every day for a year and a half, still holding up. Not bad. Number 366 was the Circle Water Bottle. This is kind of an interesting water bottle system that's been advertised online ever since then. I'm still using it, but let's first take a look back at how the original review went. You just fill the bottle with water, put on the cap, Insert your cartridge. There's a dial here that you can go from more flavor to more water. And I think you can go straight water all the way to the highest flavor. So you just insert it in there. That's easy enough. All right, let's start with number one. I could probably drink it like that, but it wouldn't be very satisfying. Let me see number two here. There was a pretty big jump from number one to number two. Let's see number three. Oh, wow. I can't imagine it getting stronger than that. That's that's about as much as I'd like. Number six, maybe too strong. Number seven. At this point, it's so strong, I don't know as much difference between number six and seven. Wow, okay. I'm gonna say no on the nine. You can buy an extra lid and you can actually have two of them at the same time if you have something like your hydro flask. I'm gonna keep using this one because I think it's a great product. All right, so I'm still using this on a semi-regular basis. I kind of go through phases. I might use it for a month and take a month off. But at first I was ordering the cartridges direct from the website. That was kind of a long process, but now they're actually sold in some stores, much more convenient. So I've been using it a little bit more often. By the way, my favorite flavor is still the coconut pineapple, which is the one I get the most often. Overall, I've recommended this quite a few times. I still use it. I think the circle is a good product. Number 367 was a collection of weird surge protectors. Let me first flash back to how the original surge protector review went. The ASEAN TV Bell & Howell Swivel Power, Quirky Power 2.0, the Mount It, and the Echo Gear. And let me try a chunky adapter test and see how well it can hold multiple thick adapters. Looks like we might be able to get one chunky adapter per side and that's, uh, that's pretty much it on this one. Looks like I'm getting five. This is gonna be kind of tough, my sixth one. It's not quite fitting number six. I have a good feeling about the quirky power. Oh yeah, that's a, it's a beautiful sight. Look at that, beautiful. Kind of locks in place there. It's a little bit wobbly though. When I'm having an adapter right there, it's hitting the wall. So I guess you kind of need to stabilize it a little bit. I guess you could technically rotate it back down once it's plugged in. It just seems very loose. It's almost coming out of the wall when I take this out of here, very loose. It's not 100% solid, but it's not as loose as the swivel power. You can tailor the Echo Gear a little bit better towards your configuration than you can the swivel power. I do like the fact that you can kind of shape it however you would like. Very versatile. You can really go in any configuration you want. I kind of like it this, like this around the bottom of the table. That's kind of cool. But this is kind of handy because you can have your power right here with you. 
and I can use my cord management in the back so it's kind of neatly tucked out of the way. I don't see why you would ever want to do that, but it's nice to know that you can if you wanted to. Now, I'm still using three of these surge protectors, but I don't use the feature that makes them weird in the first place. I don't really swivel the swivel power, and I don't really pivot the pivot power or the echo gear. Here's one of them right now I'm using for some of my lights here. It's a good surge protector, but I don't use the, the feature that makes it unusual. It's good and it works, but I don't really don't need its unusual feature. Number 368 was a collection of five kitchen gadgets under 15 bucks. There's one of those that I still use quite a bit to this day, but let's first flash back to how the original review went. This is the fridge fork. It's actually a condiment fork that attaches the side of a jar. Pull my beautiful fridge fork out of here. I mean, the fork seems certainly adequate for stabbing a pickle. It's interesting. I kind of like it. I'll put some soup right in here. Nuke it, it's gonna be hot. Thermometer showed the bowl around 140, even to 150 in some places. Not really that warm. Actually, the warmest part is not the bottom. It's actually along the side here. I mean, I've been standing here for a couple minutes now and it's not getting warm at all. So I don't think it's gonna really get warm. This is an adjustable strainer that can clip on the side of most pots. One on the side and try to make sure that it's kind of closing that gap, which is easy enough. Is it gonna hold? I think so. Oh yeah. Oh, there goes one. I just lost one. Is it as good as a regular colander? Probably not. But did it work? I would say so. Each towel supposedly has 80 uses, 3,200 uses per package. All right, it's, it's holding it, but it's, it's tearing. Oh, yeah. Let's stick that in there. Bamboo towel's doing better. Look at this. Okay, this one's just kind of floating in water. It didn't get all of it, but it did get more. It's going to struggle with this, I can already tell. It's going to do it. Well, maybe not. Can it get the entire spill? It's pretty close, though. Well, you know what? I actually did it. It was, it was very close. This is the Flip It Bottle Emptying Kit. So they include a stand and three adapters. Okay, well, the honey is dispensing nicely. That's good. Close it up. All right, so I've got the adapter on. I'm going to put it on the stand itself. It does not appear to be leaking on either one of these. Put the small gasket in there. Screw that on there and see what happens. I should say neither one of these have leaked, so that's a good thing. And, oh yeah, no leakage. There we go, sweet. Passed every test I threw at it, so I think the flip it actually works. All right, so the one I use the most is the bowl hugger, surprisingly. If I ever warm anything up in a bowl, whether it be oatmeal, stew, or soup, I reach for one of these because it's actually quite convenient. I'm kind of a big fan of the bowl huggers. In fact, last year during a Q&A, someone asked me if I had a product that was kind of a surprising hit for me, and this was the one I mentioned. I eat a lot of oatmeal and soup, and the bowl huggers are great for that. Now, I wanted to mention the mighty bamboo towels. They say you can get about 80 uses per towel. I did not find that to be the case because sometimes you get a really nasty spill. You don't want to put that in your washing machine, so you throw it away. Some people use them not realizing they were reusable and throw them away after the one use. And after a few washings, they get kind of ragged anyway. So they say 80 uses per towel. I got about three. Number 369 was kind of a weird product called the Kitchen Cube. It's kind of a measuring cup gadget that's all in one square device. I put it to the test and here's how that went. The kitchen cube all-in-one measuring device. I couldn't even put this in there to dig it out if I wanted to. I really can't scrape it out without I have to use something. I mean, I think it would have been easier just pulling out a, a cup like this and, and getting it out that way. But So I have to look on here for two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Now, if I was just using my normal measuring spoons, I would just pull this out and, and call it good. But now I have to actually waste one to put it in there. It's kind of ridiculous. I have to use the, the measuring spoon to put it in the measuring cube. One tablespoon, I'm like, this is spilling out of here. I'm kind of making a mess here. I don't know if I would have made this much of a mess with regular measuring spoons. My, my cube is getting kind of nasty looking. It's got, it's got flour on it, it's got oil all over it. It's just, it's not looking so good. I guess it's, maybe it's good to have the mess all in one place. I don't know. But they say you can use this line here to crack eggs with. I want to say, they actually said that this is a space saving device. I'm not so sure about that claim. 
Here's the measuring cups and spoons that I usually use, and it's about the same size. In fact, it has a lower profile. It's gonna be situational whether dirtying one device is better or not. It does seem like it's better for measuring liquids and measuring dry items. To me, I'm kind of on the fence about it. So when my review was over, I was kind of on the fence about the kitchen cube. I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep using it, so I left it one of my kitchen drawers, I put it alongside my regular measuring spoons and cups, and, and nobody ever used it, including me. About six months later, after no use whatsoever, I ended up putting it in the bowl yard and I haven't seen it since. Number 370 was a head-to-head -head competition of George Foreman versus Shaquille O'Neal. Well, actually they're grills. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. So today it's a multi-round head-to-head competition between Big George and Shaq Diesel. Just take a look at the grills themselves. The Shaq gr grill grates are a little bit closer together. Shaq is interesting because the bottom grill just actually, it seems to hover. It's kind of just floating there. All right, round one, we're gonna do some burgers. 425. George, all we have to do is just turn this on. We're gonna go 425. It doesn't go any higher than 425. All right, nice sizzle. 425. Shaq wasn't quite done yet. Oh wow, I think George might be done. That's how much uh, is in the Shaq drip tray. Not very impressive. How about the George drip tray? Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. The Shack Burger is slightly juicier, maybe because the George Foreman is so efficient at getting rid of the grease. So if you take a look at the results of round one, Shacks were actually a little bit juicier, although George has had those nice grill marks and cooked faster. You can see how it works with a basic grilled cheese sandwich. All right, that looks actually quite nice. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Whoa. Not a good choice for the George Foreman grill. Wow. Beautiful sizzle. All right, George is off. Shack over here, George over here. Over here is the Shack upper grill versus the Shack bottom grill. Looks like the Shack bottom grill chars better. George the opposite. Upper grill seems to char better than the lower. The chicken from the George Foreman grill is definitely juicier than the hamburger from the George Foreman grill. Shaq in both cases were pretty juicy. You could make a case for Foreman winning round three, but either way you look at it, Shaq won two out of the three rounds. So to me, Shaq wins the competition of Shaq versus George. Now I did end up using both of those grills kind of on and off over the last year, but I will say the Shaq I believe has been discontinued. I haven't found it anywhere, unfortunately, because I did like that one. I still use it on occasion. I don't use it a lot, but it has held up well. So if you can find one, I still recommend it. Otherwise, you can't go wrong with the George Foreman. All right, so that was a pretty fun batch. I would say of all those, the ones I use the most would probably be the pillow pad fold away and also the circle. But with every group of products, there's those that worked pretty well and those that didn't. But that's all I've got. I'll be back in about another month for my next update. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.